So that's interesting because on the other side of the aisle, Congresswoman Maxine Waters used that same P word. Everybody's mad at the president at this point. Michael Walsh in focus now, Republican congressman from Florida, member of the House Armed Services Committee. Good to see you today, Congressman. First of all, OK, yeah. so they've started to attack the visuals down in Del Rio, Texas, right? So right. a lot of people out of sight. They're not out of the country, though. So fixing the visuals is coming at a cost for Americans. And what do you think that looks like? Well, but this is this is a trend, right? You know, I think the only reason they're taking any action at all uh, is because of the visuals. And I think that's the only reason they uh, even started an evacuation, take this over to Afghanistan, was because of the visuals around Kabul International. But otherwise, the administration wants to turn the page and get back to its domestic socialist spending program. But Harris, I just want to say loud and clear along the lines of Senator Graham, uh, how our Border Patrol agents, our law enforcement agents are being treated here is abysmal and it's shameful. And I want them to hear uh, from me loud and clear, we have your back and thank you for the heroic work uh, that they're doing. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're getting no support from Washington, D.C., and they're being left out on their own. And now to see them scapegoated, when even the, own, the photographer of these images on horseback is saying he didn't see any evidence of any uh, type of abuse is just, again, it's just shameful and ridiculous. And just moments ago, in the last half hour or so, we heard President Biden reiterating what there is no evidence of, what we ourselves have been covering for days now, um, just simply didn't happen to the point where anybody could say it did, yet he definitively says that. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz challenges Democrats to visit the border now, just like they did when President Trump was in office. Let's watch. Yeah. Representative Ocasio-Cortez has a famous photo of her grasping her head by the kids in cages. Well, I'm going to give a simple challenge for Representative Ocasio-Cortez and for every Democrat in this body. Go see the Biden cages with your own eyes. Your reaction. Well, look, I think uh, at the end of the day, there's a broader agenda here. Uh, we are uh, on track to have two million, two million migrants coming across just this year. So you multiply that by four, and we're looking at one of the largest cities in America, eight million migrants coming across our border, and nothing, uh, it, they're taking zero action uh, to stop it. And that is a broader uh, uh, political agenda. But meanwhile, you have 30 to 40 percent of young girls, according to Doctors Without Borders, being sexually assaulted and mm -hmm. sold into human trafficking. And we and, and again, you see nothing in terms of the numbers that are being bussed and plane and, and shipped around the country. This isn't I mean, what America needs to wake up to is this isn't just a border problem. This is a problem for every state in the union. We're seeing them come into Florida. We're seeing the fentanyl that's coming across, the drugs that are coming across. And what I really worry about is the 5,000 terrorists that were released uh, out of Bagram uh, prison in that base that we handed over, ISIS, Al Qaeda, the Taliban, that are now totally unaccounted for. Where are they and are they coming across to? Yeah, do they have access, to, you know, among all the people who are flowing across the border? That's been a national security issue for weeks now. Just a couple of them ever since what broke apart in Afghanistan. Not to mention is where are the Democrats? You know, we've been covering yeah. moms who made the choice to drop their babies over the wall and, and our border agents catching those small children. I mean, we didn't see Democrats gathering along the border at that point, and it was just as heartbreaking uh, right. for months before that and months since that, since this president flipped the switch on day one from policies that were not allowing that to happen. Now, I just mentioned this. The White House has announced the Department of Homeland Security will no longer use those horse patrols, and that comes after liberal coverage, outrage in their coverage, <laughs> over images yeah. that Democrats claim show Border Patrol agents whipping Haitian migrants. President Biden, as I said, actually took a question on it last hour. Let's see it. To see people treat it like they did, horses barely running them over, people being strapped, it's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. They will be an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences. There will be consequences. It's an embarrassment, but it's beyond an embarrassment. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It sends the wrong message around the world. It sends the wrong message at home. It's simply not who we are. 
The administration accused those agents of not following protocol. However, the head of the Border Patrol Union fired back, saying the White House is using these false whipping allegations to deflect from the massive immigration crisis. Mayorkas was down on the border and he saw the horses. He knew the horses were out there and now he's uh, making, doing a 180. But when our agents are out there trying to patrol the border, do their job to the best of their ability, then they're vilified by the president. We put on that uniform because we care about the American public. We want to go out there and we want to protect them. And Joe Biden is trying to break that down. Well, look, I know that Secretary Mayorkas says he works 18 hours a day, but for about yeah, 15 right. minutes of them, he saw those same Border Patrol agents on horses, as Brandon Judd just said. Well, yeah, you know, he said that, you know, nobly that he works 18 hours a day in response to my colleague from Florida, uh, Congressman Jimenez, asking how many, give us the numbers, how many are being sent into the interior. And that was after the Senate asked the day before. He refused to give an answer uh, both times. But you know what's really embarrassing in that Biden press conference is when he continues to blame uh, his predecessor for everything that's going wrong on his watch. I mean, he says, I take responsibility, and then the same breath is pointing fingers about what he inherited. Well, he inherited a secure border. He inherited three vaccines from Operation Warp Speed. He inherited Bagram Air Base and 2,500 soldiers still in Afghanistan with flexibility on what to do uh, going forward. He inherited energy independence before he started shutting down domestic pipelines while opening up Russian pipeline. So, you know, he needs to stop lying to the American people. And what has me so, it's almost like dealing with an alcoholic that's in denial, right? He needs to stop being in denial about how wrong their policies are, taking this country into crisis, and it, admit what's gone wrong and change directions. Uh, I think that's respectable and that's what we would expect of a commander in chief. Yeah, I also didn't hear him mention the name of the vice president, Kamala Harris, at all either. <laughs> Good the point. person that he put in charge with this. Yeah. But then you couldn't talk about the successes. It's easier to, to attack, as you pointed out, Congressman, the man who had the job previously. Thank you for being in focus today.